Fitness is not a hobby, it's a lifestyle. These immortal words were once spoken by a wise yogi. After he ascended to godhood, he left us with an inspiring goal, to perfect our mind, body, soul, and Instagram account. But first, he wanted us to find out, can you beat Fallout 4 with just endurance? So I'm a gym junkie this time around, so I wanted to punch my husband in the face when I found these cigarettes. Because they had to be his, right? After the paperwork and the crying, the bombs started falling. Nate clearly didn't know the meaning of the word hurry because I was way ahead of him this time. I got into a staring contest with the sun. I won and he got so mad that he blew up Boston. Nate clearly skipped chest day at the gym because the bullet went straight through him. So I picked up a woman's best friend, shut up the vault and departed, ready to bring a new level of fitness to the Commonwealth. All right, you know the rules. No leveling up any of the other six stats or choosing perks related to those stats. There's no weapon limitations this time, but I'm still on the hard difficulty. I sprinted to Sanctuary Hills and met up with Codsworth, who helped me look for my family. To get as many XP points as possible, I ran way faster than he did so I could kill the bugs myself. I made my usual run from the Red Rocket truck stop to the Gorski cabin to get the magazine that marks Diamond City on my map, and started the long, treacherous journey to find the Endurance Bobblehead at the Poseidon Energy Plant. Now I'm not exaggerating when I say long journey, Poseidon Energy is on the other side of the map. So to avoid a chunk of enemies and save time, I use my oops wrong highway technique from the strength run. Swan dive into this lake and pick off what few enemies I run into. Now the southern zones of the commonwealth are definitely not meant to be explored when you first start the game. I ran into many scary higher level enemies. Raiders, Mirelurks, this weird kid stuck in a fridge, and super mutants, all of which I had no time to deal with. Poseidon Energy itself is swarming with raiders, you can find both the survivalist and veteran class throughout. The rooftop entrance is locked so I have to swim through some pipes to enter the sub-levels. I have to deal with the Myalurks and Protectrons until I reach the main room with the raiders in it. I tried my darndest to fight Cuddy but there are just too many raiders here. I do very little damage at such a low level. I pick a couple off, grab the bobblehead and then travel back through the sub-levels to make my escape, fast travelling back to the Red Rocket truck stop. I had actually discovered Park Street Station whilst heading to Poseidon Energy, so instead of the usual going to Concord or Diamond City straight away, I just head there to rescue Nick Valentine from Skinny Malone. Believe it or not, I only died once or twice, making my way through Vault 114. I had two very important perks by now. Toughness, which gave me increased damage resistance, and Cannibal, which allowed me to heal by eating the corpses of the Triggermen. For I think the first time ever I didn't have any mines to kill Dino, but he's not that hard. I busted out Nick, he tried to face through a door, and now it's time to face Skinny and Darla. I tried a few times but I just couldn't convince either of them to stand down. I had to use my machine gun on Skinny, I had a quick snack, and moved on to Diamond City, where I was now able to skip over Piper's intro. Diamond City looked really funky for a bit, and tried desperately to avoid the NPC's dialogue to start the Road to Freedom mission. But I actually found out multiple NPCs could start the quest, and these two settlers' dialogue starts automatically when you're within a certain distance of the agency, no matter which side you come from. During the Getting the Key quest, Geneva told Piper to make way for more respectable citizens. Clearly I wasn't one of them because she just got up and walked away. Hunting down Kellogg was a lot easier this time, although the Yao Guai part was pure chaos. I have no idea what this farmer was doing, but he was contributing very little. The sins were easy once I got my hands on a decent weapon, but the game started to glitch out when Nick was randomly dismissed from my party just before the Kellogg part. Not wanting to waste as much time as I did last time, I tried blowing up Kellogg with a fat man before he could say two words, and my god, it actually worked. I ate his brains because lord knows there weren't any legs left, and I had to return to Diamond City to talk to Nick. I fast travelled to the middle of a standstill, and before I could say anything, this guy's head exploded. I tired quickly of this guard's rudeness, and the situation went from bad to worse. I loaded up a save, talked to Nick and Piper, and gave Nick the cold shoulder for abandoning me earlier, and headed to the memory den by myself. I took what I thought was a shortcut to Good Neighbor, but in reality it was actually a death trap. I took out my frustrations on Finn, ignored Hancock, ignored all his memory crap, and headed out to the glowing sea. The rad resistant perk really helped me here, and I only ran into one death claw. I talked to Virgil, who somehow doubted I managed to kill Kellogg with just a fat man. Fine, be that way. Green text genetics time and the gunners were actually a bit challenging. I swear this part's difficulty is totally random. If the gunners are easy, then the courser is pure hell, and vice versa. I was proven right when Z2 again phased through the railing, but didn't die this time. I took him out, ignored all the hostages, and followed the freedom trail to meet the railroad. Now this is the first faction I've actually met, and for a bunch of covert agents, none of them look very fit. They weren't really on my level, 
I was still really mad at the Minutemen for that stuff that they pulled last time, so I decided to help out the Brotherhood by unlocking the Wii Fit trainer within them. Cambridge Police Station went just swimmingly. Arcjets went way better than last time, although Dan still got cooked by the flames, but at least he put his helmet on this time. Impressing the Brotherhood schmucks wasn't that hard. Yogi here continued my long-running feud with the bears, but before I knew it, I was promoted tonight after doing like two missions. So it kind of bugs me about the game. In three of the four factions, you're pretty much given high-ranking promotions like straight away. The Minutemen makes you general, even though there are far more competent people who later joined down the line, like Ronnie Shaw. Knights are perfectly fine and accepted rank in the Brotherhood, and you're basically named successor to father on your first day at the Institute. You never really have to earn anything, the biggest challenge is finding these factions. You can gain the Minutemen and the Brotherhood promotion before you get to Diamond City. It's a slight tangent I know, but I had to get that off my chest. So up next is Fort Strong, because apparently I need to do this mission before reaching the Institute if I'm siding with the Brotherhood. I have a real tough time trying to find the vertebrate that I'm supposed to take, so I say screw it and just walk there instead. Dan's warns me that old military places like this may still be inhabited. Dude, were you even at the briefing? Yes, this place is still inhabited by super mutants who are here to kill. Killing the behemoth and the legendary on foot is hard, but I'm way too fit to get knocked down by these guys. Now that the nukes are secure, it's time to build the molecular relay. I mean, it would be time if I wasn't out of goddamn ceramics. I steal some coffee cups and build the damn thing for a very unimpressed looking Maxon. While in the Institute, I try to convince a 10 year old boy that I, an 8 foot armoured warrior, mean no harm. Father makes a very unconvincing argument to join the dark side. I meet some losers who by the looks of it have never been to gym a day in their life. And I convince Dr. Lee to leave the Institute by finding some incriminating evidence that was just lying around. When I return, it's time for the actuators, and instead of getting horribly lost in this creepy hospital, I found the exit straight away and completed the task in record time. Hooray, I'm actually getting good at a game I've beat like 7 times. Back now to the glowing sea where I immediately run into trouble with one of these rad scorpions. I tried calling for backup, but my god did it take far too long. Dan stated the obvious again, and I was wearing power armor this time so I could just jump all the way down to the bottom of the sentinel site. Instead of finding something amazing, I just got this hunk of junk and secured the nukes for the brotherhood again. All was well until this glowing one gave me a heck of a spook. Not gonna lie, I get chills whenever I start up Liberty Prime. It's just so cool. Everything's going well at this point. Not only am I still in a natural high from running the entire length of the glowing sea, but I really feel like I'm being accepted into the Brotherhood. Dance and I have become such good friends, and absolutely nothing could go wrong. Oh, well, this is awkward. So it turns out Dan is a synth, and Maxon wants him destroyed. I'm not really a big fan of this, so I try an experiment. I place a bunch of mines where Maxon should walk down after Dance and I take the elevator up from the bunker. Maybe, just maybe, I can kill him without causing the Brotherhood to turn hostile. I set up the mines, use Great Mentas to convince Dance to keep on living, exit the bunker, and damn, he just spawns there instead. That's disappointing, but not unexpected. I reload a save just so I don't waste those mines, do all that nonsense again, and return to the Bridwin with a brand new rank and a bunch of new targets. The Railroad. This was too easy. Glory is annoying, but at one point she just ran away from me, so I had no real trouble taking them all down. Just to rub it in their faces, I stole Tom's hat once everyone was dead. I reported back and began the penultimate mission, Mass Fusion. I said goodbye and quite frankly good riddance to the Institute, and flew over there with Proctor Ingram, taking out since left, right, and center. I had a little trouble with the robots near the reactor, but only because I was running low on ammo. It's around here though I found maxing out your endurance makes the game pretty easy. I have a ton of health, and thanks to perks like toughness and adamantium skeleton, nothing seems to hurt me that much. I also don't have to worry about eating uncooked food thanks to the lead belly perk, I even found that I gained health back upon re-entering the reactor due to the ghoulish perk. Endurance means you can survive anything. I definitely recommend it for a survival playthrough. With the Beryllium Agitator, I powered up Liberty Prime and skipped over the dumb escort mission by fast traveling straight to the CIC ruins. I'm still disappointed that Liberty Prime didn't get into a fistfight with some giant Godzilla-like synth creature that the Institute pulled out at the last minute, but I guess someone had to create this small hole in the ground for us to just walk through. Now this is where the Brotherhood really shine. I may disagree with them with a lot of things, but damn, do they just tear through these synths. Elder Maxon destroys everything in his path with his Gatling laser, and the power armor wearing knights have miniguns. I don't think I lost a single one. Some troops aren't in armor, but damn, they just charge into battle, taking out three or four synths before going down. Just look at what they do to the Corsa. I barely had to do anything. Sean was being super lazy, so I just kind of ignored him, and I opened the doors to the reactor and made my final push. 
the two legendary synths didn't drop anything too special. And you know what comes next? Reactor, Kid Sean, Teleport to Safety, and one big boom. Returning to the Pridwin, I was granted the rank of Sentinel, and I took my jetpack and flew into the night. At least that's what I would have done if this stupid jetpack actually worked. Are you joking? All that for what is basically a glide option? This is not the satisfying ending I had hoped for. But you know what would be? Pew 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 pew! Haha, <laughs> take that Raiders! I made my way back through Poseidon Energy, found that dumbass Cuddy, and proved that with hard work and dedication to fitness, anything was possible. And with that wrapped up in a nice little bow, I beat Fallout 4 with just Endurance. So this one a lot better than Perception. Though I still feel like Endurance is very much a background stat for most of the game, some perks are really helpful and they keep you alive in the combat heavy sections. Others are more about conquering your environment. After I got the bobblehead, I hardly used the water girl perk, and the lead belly perk doesn't really have much of an advantage. I'm always finding cooking stations that make food safe to eat, and you get experience points for cooking it. The leveling system is also really weirdly spaced out here. I had to level up lead belly three times in a row at one point. There was heaps of times I couldn't upgrade a perk because I was just too low a level. Overall, I had no real problem with this run. Next time's gonna be a real challenge when I test just how far charisma will get me. Can I master the wastelands of just my words? Don't worry, challenges for other games will be coming. I just wanted to get the charisma one done as it's a bit of a slog. As always, I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe, like, and comment a challenge you think I should try next. Till next time, this has been Beating Fallout 4 with only endurance. Have a fantastic day.